Good morning and welcome to Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church in Winchester, Virginia on this third Sunday of Lent. I am Pastor Jonathan Boynton and Pastor Martha Miller Sims will be preaching this morning and Mark Lindgren will be playing the organ. Let us continue with our confession and forgiveness. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray together. 
Holy God, through your Son, you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Exodus. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is on the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God the world did not know God through wisdom, God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world where God has pitched a tent for the sun. It goes forth from the uttermost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning seat. (laughs) 
The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold. Sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the second chapter. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making the, my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. In this morning's psalm, the psalmist praises God and boldly proclaims, the teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous. These are more to be desired than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. In the first reading this morning, we hear the account of God giving the Ten Commandments to the Israelites after they were deliver, delivered from slavery in Egypt. The Ten Commandments given long ago are still relevant, teaching us how to live in community, in relationship with God and with each other. God's law is to be seen as a gift, to be desired more than gold, sweeter than honey. And, and we can say that other laws that establish order and the safety and well-being of all people can be seen as a gift. One of my seminary professors changed the way I interpret the Ten Commandments when he taught us that they are good news for us and that in each of these laws there is a gift for community. The good news in these particular timeless commandments is that God has established a community in which all will have a relationship with God, 
who provides and cares and sustains us, who, who sets aside time each week, Sabbath, for all of creation to rest from labor and commerce, a community in which relationships and families are honored, relationships of marriage and the relationship between parents and children, a community where no one needs to fear violence or murder, where no one has to worry about thieves stealing from them or people telling lies about them, slandering their character, in which no one is jealous and takes what is precious to their neighbor. In his refreshing explanation of the Ten Commandments, Martin Luther shows us that shows us not only what we should not do, but also the positive of each commandment, the gift for true community. Luther starts his explanation for each commandment with the phrase, we are to fear and love God. To fear God doesn't mean we should be afraid of God. It means that we approach God with awe and respect, acknowledging that God is our creator. The first three commandments have to do with our relationship with God, uh, that we trust God above everything else, everyone else, that we use God's name not to deceive or curse, but to pray and praise and be thankful to God, that we have the rest we need and time to worship and study God's word. The other seven commandments have to do with our relationships with each other. So Luther's explanation of the fifth commandment, you shall not murder, is this. We are to fear and love God so that we neither endanger nor harm the lives of our neighbors, but instead help and support them in all of life's needs. For the seventh commandment, you shall not steal, Luther wrote, we are to fear and love God so that we neither take our neighbor's money or property, nor acquire them by using shoddy merchandise or crooked deals, but instead to help them to improve and protect their property and income. For the Eighth Commandment, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, Luther wrote, we are to fear and love God so that we do not tell lies about our neighbors, betray or slander them or destroy their reputations, but instead we are to come to their defense, speak well of them, and interpret everything they do in the best possible light. And the Tenth Commandment, you shall not covet your neighbor's wife, now we would also include our neighbor's husband, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Luther's explanation is this, we are to fear and love God so that we do not entice, force, or steal away from our neighbors, their spouses, household workers, or livestock, but instead urge them to stay. God calls us to protect our neighbor's life and help our neighbors keep their relationships and possessions, livelihood and reputation. What would the world be like if everyone took to heart the gift of the law? What would our community be like, our families, our friendships? It isn't only about what we should not do in order to have a thriving, life-giving community but also what to do, how to love our neighbors. We've all heard the terrible stories coming out of Texas in February. First, the ice storm that caused an accident involving 133 vehicles in freezing temperatures. Then it was the pipes bursting in homes, the, the problems with the power grid, the, the power outages in freezing temperatures. My sister Maureen lives in a part of Fort Worth, Texas called Ryan Place. She sent me an article written by a neighbor, Eric Prokesh, who described the experience of his neighbors becoming first responders for each other in the crisis. The local community Facebook page became an essential resource for information. 
and uh, such as the location of local warming centers and information about how to shut off water so that pipes would not freeze and information about local needs. One local elderly couple was dependent on caregivers who were not able to get to them because of the storm and with no power they were dependent on firewood for heat and they were running out of, of the firewood. When neighbors heard about this, they provided a supply of firewood to last them several days. Many people offered firewood, soup, and other supplies to neighbors in need and opened their homes for people to get warm or spend the night. One couple offered their home uh, as a warm place and also made rounds in their Jeep to deliver supplies uh, to those who would, could not venture out of their homes. A local Anglican church opened the rectory as a warming center. In Austin, Texas, in the same winter storm, Ryan Sively <clears throat> didn't hesitate to help people in 98 stranded cars one day on the interstate and another 47 cars the next day without asking for anything in return. He had previously been in an accident himself when asked why he did it, Sively told the local news station, KVUE, well, put yourself in their shoes. If you were sitting on the side of the road with your wife and your kids and you're freezing in the car and it's not running and you don't have anywhere to go and you don't have anyone to call, what do you do? Seeing our neighbor's humanity, really seeing them, seeing their needs, and reaching out beyond our own selfish needs and desires to help our neighbors, to protect them and provide for their needs, to help them keep their houses, family, livelihood, health, putting ourselves in their shoes, that is fulfilling the spirit of the Ten Commandments, which is love. God's way is love. Jesus summed up the Ten Commandments in two. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. That is really the heart of what we are contemplating in the season of Lent. How God has loved us in Christ Jesus as he has walked in our shoes and extended himself for the good of others giving himself away on the cross so that others may have life, so that we may have life. It is about how God has continued to love and care for us, often through other people, and about God's call to us to love our neighbor. The teachings, statutes, judgments of God are to be desired more than fine gold, far sweeter than honey. Taste and see that God is good. Amen. Show your might, put the strong.
the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all those in need. Faithful God, there is no God before you. Purify the faith of your church, that your people place their trust in nothing besides you. Your name alone is holy. Guide believers throughout the world to reflect before they speak that in every situation your people's words and actions honor your name. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The heavens declare your glory. Renew your creation. Provide leaders in the struggle for clean air and water. Protect creatures and crops that rely on healthy ecosystems. Grant us humility and help us acknowledge when our way of life pollutes the earth and skies, and then to change our ways. Open our minds and hearts to adjust to inconveniences for the sake of others yet to be born. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. Fill leaders with the foolishness of your peace and mercy, for your laws are just and defend the vulnerable. Work through legislators, judicial systems, and law enforcement to protect the well-being and freedom of all. Help heal our political polarization and soften our hearts to seek collaboration and compromise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your weakness is stronger than human strength. Protect those who are vulnerable and give courage to all those who are suffering. We pray especially for Brooks, Sheila, Barbara, Mary, Bob, Jan, Karen, Jane, Bill, Brian, David, Jeff, Sean, Dorothy, Pete, Patty, Laura, Fred, Blake, Ashley, Danny, John, Grace, Charlie, Joyce, Phil, Heather, and Spencer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Defend victims of crime and bring redemption to those who have harmed others. Give Sabbath rest to all those who labor. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We ask for your healing for the 113 million people worldwide who have been stricken with COVID-19 and for your consolation for the loved ones of the two and a half million souls who have died. Have mercy on and give strength to those first responders and medical personnel who care for your sick and injured children throughout the world. We lift up our own medical personnel first responders and caregivers. Julie, Courtney, Dick, Scott, Lisa, Sheila, Rick, 
Dixie, Joe, Nikki, Patty, Chris, Cheryl, Cian, Eileen, Joe, Patrick, Marianne, George, Sarah, Linda, Sheila, Christy, Murad, Vicky, Kathy, Chris, Steve, Christopher, Krista, Becky, Gail, Deanna, Bill, Shanti, Stephen, Anna, Ron, Becky, Brenda, Jim, Keith, and Tracy. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. As mortals, the temptation to seek earthly comforts and live for ourselves is difficult to resist. Give us strength to proclaim Christ crucified and to focus our eyes on your commandments. Keep us from harming others through our thoughts, words, and deeds. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We pray for safety and guidance for the men and women who serve in the military at home and abroad, especially Seth, Ben, Brian, Chip, Brett, Stuart, Andrew, Corey, Elizabeth, Ben, Ellen, Mitra, Nate, Tyler, Kristen, Brandon, Christine, Alex, Danny, Ron, Cassie, and Scott. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The cross of Jesus reveals your deepest mercy, love, and wisdom to us who seek your face and long for salvation. Thank you for all the martyrs whose witness reveals the power of the cross. Give us the same trust in life and in death. We pray for comfort for all whose loved ones have died, especially the family and friends of Leah Schaefer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.